With one ticket already punched to the Suffolk County AA Finals, one more still to be claimed. And it'll be to a newcomer, either Hills West or Central Islip, next on News 12 Varsity. Well, hi again, everyone. Welcome to Stony Brook University, the site of the Suffolk County Girls AA Semifinals. Matt Shortis with you, Dylan Butler to come in just a couple of moments. CI and Hills West, two teams that are really new to the scene. Both coaches, I asked them when the last time they played in the Suffolk County Finals, and neither said they could remember. They tried to look back into school history. CI won a title in 1960. Hills West, they weren't sure if they ever won a Suffolk County title, especially at the AA level. We're going to see a little contrast in styles today as Will Hills West looking to push, push, push. CI, they are led by their defense. The last two games, they have held opponents to eight points in the first quarter. And Hills West, we talked about that pushing mentality. They are led by one of the best players on Long Island, and that is Tori Harris, coming off a game in the quarterfinals where she had 35 points and 19 rebounds for the five-year varsity player, four-year starter, who's heading to James Madison University, just the latest in the long line of Harris's that have donned the Hills West uniform. Tobias, Tyler, and Terry all won county titles, and Tory trying to do the same on the girls' side. CI, they're a little bit more balanced, but they're led by Chanel Taylor's 19 points per game, a third-year starter. And uh, she went to St. Anthony's for a year and then came back. She scored her 1,000th career point, in the revenge win over Longwood in the Suffolk County quarterfinals. So CI and Hills West trying to punch a ticket and a date with Comac in the Suffolk County Championship game. It's all coming up next on News 12 Varsity. Who will rise higher? Dunk harder. And go farther. The playoffs are here. To News 12 Varsity all postseason long. Back at Island Federal Credit Union Arena for the second of our doubleheader, the second girls double A Suffolk semifinal, Hills West. Coming in 18 and 4 on the season after an upset of Ward Melville 62 to 58 in the quarterfinals, coached by Brian Dugan, a Hills East graduate in his second season. Team has made the playoffs both years that he has been the head coach. Joy Wilson, Tori Harris. Shania Baker, Samantha Hinkey, and Kayla Robertson to the starters. Central Islip 20 and 2 on the season. Paul Venturi, the head coach, 12th year as head coach for CI. And Nabia Bonsu, Zaveria Haynes, Jade Walls, Anaya Jenkins, and Chanel Taylor round out the starting lineup. CI has not lost since December 27th to Longwood, and they avenged that loss in the quarterfinals at CI in White. Going left to right, and Hills West in the red. It'll be going right to left on the baseline. Both teams have real tremendous defense, and it's Jenkins down low for the first points of the game. Strong move inside by Jenkins. At the half of both of their prior games, Central Islip has held their opponents to eight points. So Hills West has their hands full today. There's Harris, the senior bound for James Madison. And they'll call a foul on the floor. And there'll be a Bonsu, the guilty party. Tori Harris averaging 24 points, 8.9 rebounds per contest. There's Kayla Robertson. Harris thought about a three. She drives on the baseline, puts it on the floor, stripped by Jade Walls. And you see just why this CI team, the Musketeers, are as stout defensively as they are. This is Chanel Taylor averaging 19 points per game. Right side three for Bonsu is good. 5-0 CI to start. Kayla Robertson, the third year player, running the show at the point guard spot. And you see immediately how much attention that Harris is going to get. Harris fouled down low. Severia Haynes was guilty of the foul. Monica Cost, Willie Crespo, and Gus Hernandez are officiating crew this afternoon. Harris might have got away with an up and down, backs it out for three, and that won't fall. 
Long rebound pulled down by Shania Baker. They bring it around the horn for Hinky. Baker on the head fake. Hinky dumps it off for Harris. Harris puts it on the floor. Harris in tight, puts it up and in. Yeah, you can see a bit of a struggle early on for Hills West offensively. Intercepted by Robertson. Up ahead, it's Baker. Baker across the lane for Hinky, who can't hold on, and loses it out of bounds. You wonder how much of an advantage it is to play the second game of a doubleheader where your players probably got here early, got to kind of look around Stony Brook a little bit and maybe get a better sense of their surroundings. Plus it's a more normal start time than 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Yes, amen to that. Right side three for Taylor, it's good. Three different players have scored for CI and a double dribble is called against Hills West. Yeah, that's a great sign if you're CI spreading the wealth offensively. Taylor on the left side for Bonsu. Taylor, now it's Haynes will try a long shot. That one's no good. Hinky's got it. Outlet ahead to Harris. Tori Harris spins five girls around her. <laughs> Forced up the shot, got her own rebound, puts it up and in. A foul whistled against Hinky. Yeah, what Harris did in the quarterfinals, just outstanding performance. When you talk about putting your team on your back, she did that and then some. As Bonsu, who will try a three. They are feeling confident from beyond the arc early on. Third three so far for CI. Harris count the basket and the foul as she's got all six Hills West points. Harris going to James Madison, a phenomenal women's program. Unable to get the free throw to go. Coming it down low to Jenkins. Harris knocked it away into the hands of Robertson. Numbers for Hills West. Robertson across to Hinky. Back it comes for Robertson. Little pump fake off the window and in. Now the sophomore getting Hills West back to within three on the defense and offensive side of the floor. As Taylor as the defense slides off of her. Lob pass, they were looking for Walls, deflected on the way to her. Walls kicks it back out for Haynes. Haynes a long two, no good. Rebounded by Jenkins. Jenkins back up with it and she's fouled. Well, that will put Anaya Jenkins at the line. 5'8 senior, third year starter, a two time all league player, about 16 and 10 averaging. Gets a second to bounce in. Four point CI lead at 12 to 8 midway through this first quarter. There's Robertson trying to work off a screen, not much doing there. Harris and we'll have an offensive foul as Joy Wilson tripped up Nabia Bonsu inadvertently. Now Wilson's got to be careful. Let out yeah. a, a pretty emphatic stomp after the foul was called. Taylor, double team coming up top. And then Hills West slides 
Back into their defense. Layup down low for Jenkins. What a good start she's had. Five points. Well, pick and roll, they slide it out to Baker. Baker inside. So an achievement for Hills West already. They have outscored the first half margin of both of CI's prior opponents. Hinky, offensive foul on the charge. Second personal foul against Hinky. And an opportunity coughed up for Hills West. CI calling a timeout. I was talking to the head coach of Central Islip, Paul Venturi, yesterday on the phone. And you know, it's been a while when I'm asking the 12th year head man, when's the last county championship Central Islip won? And he said, hold on, I'm in the gym right now. Let me look up at the banners. And that answer was 1960. That was the last and only county title for CI. They were in the semifinals in 2003. Right now they have a four point advantage in this first quarter. Tough fall away shot, gets it to go for Jenkins. You know, when you look at the firepower that they have, they have three bona fide scorers in Taylor, Jenkins, and Bonsu. They're a tough matchup for anybody. Here's Harris, hoop in the harm. Silky smooth move to the hole by Harris. Finishes as she gets hit. Tell you, you can't help but see the similarities with her older brother. Which one? <laughs> pick them. Pick and Brian Dugan, her head coach, spent nine seasons as an assistant on the boys team under Bill Mataratona. So he's got plenty of experience with her and the rest of her family. Hinky got held up, might have been fouled. Hinky comes across to the near side. Baker thought about it. Baker bounce pass across to Hinky. Baseline jumper connects. What a great job by Hinky there first. Going cross court to spread the defense out and then getting the ball back and knocking down the short jumper. Jenkins moving down low and Coleman is hammered on the blocks. Joy Wilson picking up foul number two. And the fifth team foul against CI. So free throws from here on out. Coleman netting the first free throw, first year player. A piece for the future. For this top heavy CI roster, seniors in key spots. Two-point game, Harris a little out of control, ball to the floor. CI coming away with the stump. Here comes Taylor, Taylor going up against Robertson and a blocking foul. Huh. I don't know. Against Robertson. I feel like she was going down. Before the be contact. Absolutely, yeah, she w was out of control. She seemed to be losing her footing. Tough, tough call. Especially with Robertson picking up her second foul on the call. Now that might be one, even though there's contact, you gotta just let go. Oh, no doubt. Because even if there wasn't contact, she was going down. And then we'll have a foul on Taylor. If it is against Taylor, that'll be her second foul. Well, we saw this in our first semifinal. Oh no, they're gonna say it, it was against Walls. Where there was way too many 
trips to the foul line. Which really disrupted the flow of that game, which was won by Comac over Hopog. Sam Henke, the second leading scorer yeah, they on are. Hills West. Uh, Comac, Comac scouting. Henke a junior. Really loves to crash down low. About 95% of her points come from in the paint. I think if you're a coach too, you'll love that, right? Wanting the physicality. When you have her and Harris, those are two girls that not afraid of the contact underneath and the fouls on the floor. I like the jump step too. And Shania Baker earns herself a spot or a couple of free throws. Early on, Hills West hitting their free throws. Makes one of two. Harris trying to go back up with it. Blocked back outside. Hinky will try the jumper. Connects on it. And Hills West has their first lead of the game. Hinky's up to five. Tough shot is short. Long rebound to Haynes. Bounce in low to Jenkins. Jenkins turn around that short. Harris has got it for Hills West. I think one of the things that's great about her too is she'll draw the attention as a long three. Baker misfired, kept alive. I think we had a foul with bodies crashing. In the conversation first, but uh, back to my point about Harris, one of the things that's great about her is that she she knows that the defense is coming to her, but she doesn't force it. She gets the rest of her teammates involved as well. <laughs> so the officials got together, pointed to CI, and it seemed like once they realized what they were saying, they decided otherwise. Harris will inbound for Hills West. Charlotte Anson checking in for the first time, the freshman. Shania Baker. That's Anson. Harris, a quick crossover, three pointer in and out. Hard fought rebound, Coleman had it. Hills West with a little pressure. Under a minute to go in the first quarter. One point game. Taylor to the basket, no good. Rebound for Haynes and then she traveled. Had a second difference between the shot and the game clock. And Harris, the senior, with the ball in her hands, going to let much of that elapse. Now she begins her move with about 10 seconds. Harris stops on a dime, spins, Ooh. and drains one from the free throw line. 11 first quarter points for Tori Harris. Long heave forward, and the horn will sound on the first quarter. Hills West scores the final six points in the quarter. And they lead 21-18 over CI with eight in the books. On March 12th, starting at 11 a.m., watch the best of Long Island High School basketball battle for the right to be called champions. Live on Channel 14. This doubleheader begins at 11 a.m. with the Class A Finals. Followed by the Class AA Finals at 1.30 p.m. Watch the best of Long Island High School basketball live on the big screen on Optimum Channel, Channel 14. Back at Island Federal Credit Union Arena, 21-18, Hills West leading Central Islip. 
Hills West already knocked off one higher seed, trying to do so again in the semifinals. Shania Baker. A lot of dribble there. Harris, jab step, pulls up three, in and out. Ball hits the deck, and then Taylor's got it for CI. Taylor one on two, tough shot. Harris had it, knocked out of her hands, kept alive by CI. And then we have a foul. Looks like Walls was fouled. I believe they're going to get Charlotte Anton on the personal. Straight away, this is Taylor. Back to Bonsu. Right through the hands of Coleman and out of bounds. I'd say, as an athletic program, Hills West has found their way to Stony Brook a few times already this year, huh? Yeah, Suffolk County football champions, played in the LIC. Here's Harris again, we'll try a three. Off the mark a couple times to begin the second quarter. Bonsu putting it on the floor. Harris swats it away authoritatively. Yeah, she did such a great job to get her, use her length, get her arm up there, make sure there was no contact for the foul. It'll be a Bonsu third year starter, two time all league performer. Would like to play in college. It's getting some Division II interest at the moment. This one off the left blocks for Jenkins. She gets it to go nine points in the contest early in the second. And it's been a while since we've seen the last field goal for CI. You have to go back to the three-minute mark of the first quarter. Giada Cooper into the game for the first time. Harris on the crossover, lost a dribble, gets it a Cooper on the left side, steps inside the arc, uncorks a long range jumper that won't go. Kept alive by Harris, Harris turns, three girls around her and it's ripped out of her hands by Taylor. Taylor ahead to Jenkins, Jenkins stripped but fouled. Yeah, Harris tried to pass out of that, but as you said, just stripped on the play. Another conversation among the officials. So they are going to get Jada Cooper on the personal foul. Some more. Confusion at the scores table now. What a great facility this is too, huh? Yeah, it took a little bit longer than they would have liked, but the, the renovation of this building is fantastic. And it, it fits really Stony Brook perfectly. Yeah. Taylor, some contact, tough defense. Shania Baker right side of the lane, too strong. Hinky's there for the offensive glass. That won't go. Another one on the right side. That's off the back heel. Battle for it, tipped up, and it's still on the floor as it comes out to Taylor of CI. Three opportunities for Hills West. The Colts, though, unable to capitalize. Coleman and Taylor. Now it's Bonsu. Bonsu underneath. Nice feed to Walls, who's blocked by Cooper. And I think Harris got a piece as well. There's Harris on a jab step. Left corner comes for Hinky. Hinky will try a three too strong. Long pass ahead. Here's Taylor going up against Harris. She's harmed by Hinky. That is the third foul against Samantha Hinky with five minutes to play in the half. I take it back. That is. Foul number two. It's 
So Taylor to the line, four points, one of two free throw shooting today. Looks like the Hills West boys team is in attendance under the yeah, under the basket are. over there. So Taylor missing both. Harris to the right side for Baker. Three-pointer in and out. Baker gets her own rebound, though. Right side, it comes for Cooper. Cooper double dribbled. A couple of substitutions as Joy Wilson returns, as does Caleb Robertson. Both girls with two fouls. Hills West boys bowed out a little early. Earlier than they're accustomed to, earlier than I'm like, they'd like, I'm sure. Bill Mataratona, they lost to Brentwood in the quarterfinals. Yeah, that a quarterfinal matchup. That was a championship matchup from last year. A year ago. Hills West was the seventh seed. Brentwood will play here later on. Three-pointer from Taylor as she falls down. So Hills West nearly midway through the second quarter. They've not scored in the quarter. Baker tries a three. That's too strong. West able to knock the ball to the ground. They've got it. And a held ball. Arrow going to CI. Over and back. Seen a little bit of everything here today. I went unforced too. I said to Paul Venturi before the game, are you any concerns about the court? He's like, no, the court's the same. I'm worried about <laughs> what's around the court. I said, thanks. It's kind of what I meant. <laughs> Took me literally. That's the same guy you're asking of the last championship, and he's That's literally true. looking at the banners. That is true. There's Harris. Again, they just collapse right on her. Hinky kicking it out to Robertson. She tries a three, no good. Hills West not able to get anything inside. They keep looking outside, and they've just been off on their threes. Here's Bonsu right through the rack. The lead is four. Again, they've shut out Hills West in the second quarter. Robertson, pass intended, was intercepted by Bonsu. Two on one. Bonsu sidesteps the defender and lays it in. And that's that defense that you're talking about that's led to some offense and also led to a timeout for Hills West. Nabia Bonsu, up to 10 points today, has scored the last two baskets for CI. And this defense has come on as this season has gone along. And you look at their last two games, they defeated Longwood 43-37 in the quarterfinals. And before that, it was ESM 41-23. Again, both of those teams held to just eight points in the first quarter, uh, first half, pardon me. I think if you're Hills West right now, I think maybe part of the conversation in the huddle is to find ways to get Harris some more looks. Maybe set some screens, maybe pick some pick and pops. But she's got to get a couple more touches on the ball. There have been times where they held opponents. The first game of the season, they held Bayport Blue Point to 22 points. January 24th, they held Lindenhurst to 19 points.
But you're right, right now it's about Hills West trying to find an offensive rhythm because they are getting shots, they're not hitting them though. Harrison that, jab step. Hinky. That's a little bit better too. You're getting her at least the ball. She's got it right side. Three pointer is good. First points of the quarter for Hills West and Tori Harris. Just like Coach Butler drew it up. Been around the game a little bit. Harris commits the foul. Long three, short, loose ball foul. Going against Hills West, and that is going to put CI in the bonus with 2.32 to go in the first half. And Joy Wilson picking up the foul. That is her third. Anaya Jenkins, double figures already. So she's got 10, Bonsu's got 10, Chanel Taylor has seven. Those are their three big scorers. Missing on the second, and it's Harris battling for the rebound. Out of bounds it goes. Four point game, 28-24, CI on top. Shania Baker to Robertson. Harris getting it on the near side. Harris on a pump fake. Feet across to Hinky who gets it to go. A great job by Harris as well. Getting to the other side of the court and then a nice pass down low off the screen. A good feed, but Lombert wasn't able to handle it. Up top for Bonsu straightaway three, well off the mark. And it's rebounded by the freshman Anton. Chance for Hills West to tie on this possession. Driving, Baker is fouled on her way to the basket. Yeah, Baker took a bit of a stutter step and then switched gears and went hard to the hole. She was hit, she'll shoot two. Shania Baker, a senior. Coach says she's a big game player. Nineteen points versus Huntington earlier this season when Tori Harris was out. Game winning three pointer versus Deer Park earlier in the year as well. One of two. It's a one point game. 28 27 inside, two to play in the first half. Jenkins, good defense by Robertson. Jenkins forced the shot a little, got her own rebound off the miss. Back at it comes Bonsu. Bonsu across. For Taylor. Bonsu shot off the heel. Out of bounds. It'll be Hills West possession. And you can see the Colts ratcheting up the intensity defensively as well. And remember, a lot of this is coming off that timeout. Robertson, they movement. run the same play they ran a moment ago to get Hinky open. They find her on the right elbow. Hinky pump fake, back out. Up top for Robertson, off a screen from Harris. Robertson's pass deflected by Taylor. She gets it back. Inside to Harris, nine on the shot clock. Up top, Robertson straightaway three. A little too strong. Hinky is there for the board, goes back up with it, deflected. Another offensive rebound, deflects out to Lombard of CI. Lombard across the lane to Walls, and she traveled. I think Lombard's pass was intended for Taylor. And Jade Walls was in the middle of that triangle. Under a minute to play in the first half, one point game. It's been a pretty fun back and forth contest so far. Harris step back, three pointer, in and out. Tipped up by Anton, the freshman hard one rebound. Harris comes back with it again and misses and makes it the second time. 17 first half points for Tori Harris. And Hills West back on top, 30 to 28. 
Here's Taylor, tough shot. Heaved ahead for Baker with 10 seconds to go. Baker taken away by Bonsu. Six to go in the first half. Bonsu hesitates. Out to Taylor. Two to go. Taylor shot well off the mark. Harris finds it in her hands as the horn sounds. And Hills West has a two-point lead heading into the locker room. Well, we talked about Harris early, and we saw what she can do. And huge three-pointer at the end to put her team up at the break after a tough early portion of that second quarter for the Colts. CI kept Hills West off the board for four minutes in that first half, and they managed to score nine points in the final four to preserve the lead. Second quarter, second half coming up. Hills West leading CI by two. On March 11th, starting at 5 p.m., watch the best of New Jersey high school basketball battle for the right to be called champions live on Channel 14. At the buzzer, good! This doubleheader begins at 5 p.m. with the non-public B finals, followed by the non-public A finals at 7 p.m. Watch the best of New Jersey high school basketball live on the big screen on Optimum Channel, Channel 14. Start of the second half, a charge late in that first half by Hills West has them on top by two. The Colts in red going left to right to start the second half. The freshman Anton has her shot blocked. Matt Schwartz, is still in Butler, and Tom Schnorr is with you as we're at Stony Brook University. Taylor with speed to tie it. Chanel Taylor with nine points today. And the big three contributing in a big way for CI. Well, at halftime, the group of Hills West guys that was <laughs> down on to our right, they switched halves, went over to the other side so they could be under the basket when CI is shooting, be a little bit more raucous, a traveling Mr. Whammy party. Yeah, and leading that charge is Syracuse bound Cam Jordan right in the front row. There's Harris to the left side. Hinky, her three won't go. At the buzzer, Bonsu's got it. Bonsu into the near side corner for Anaya Jenkins. Jenkins double teamed. Back to Bonsu on the left block, gets around a defender. Bonsu flicks it up, trying to draw contact, and wasn't able to do so. Robertson tripped up, tried to get it away. She fell, but could not. No Mel surprise is not in the uh, in that scrum with his players, Bill Mataratona. I think I say uh, Andrew Rappaport. Nah, Rappaport's he's chilling at half court. <laughs> But you know he's a he's a kind of a, a fun guy. Who Andrew? No, definitely not Andrew. <laughs> Mataratona. No, you're right. He is. Maybe he's watching uh, our live cast. Perhaps. That'd be a Bonsu. Jenkins will try a three and drain it. Two baskets to start the second half for CI and they regain the lead. Kayla Robertson, the sophomore guard, down low to Hinky. There's Anaya Jenkins crossover. Jenkins, tough in traffic, short on the shot. And Anton, the freshman, been impressed with her rebounding ability in this game. Yeah, and you know what? She's kept it simple, too. Rebound, kick out. Ooh. Baker befuddled at the non-foul call. I think that's a good call. She just <clears throat> went in to a pair of defenders and a couple trees there were not moving. And Taylor straight away three pointer, no good. 
Yeah, they are. <laughs> Cam having a laugh. It's almost like he knew our cameras were zooming <laughs> yeah. in on him at that very moment. It's very impressive. Robertson poked away by Taylor. Trying to catch up. Taylor to the basket is fouled. And Kayla Robertson commits the foul. Now Chanel Taylor, one of the captains of this CI team. Defensively, that is their hallmark. And we saw it yesterday with Kayshawn Charles leading the way both offensively and defensively, but it was that defense that really spurred his team at one point. Chanel Taylor doing the same for CI. She also reached uh, an important milestone last game, eclipsing the 1,000 point mark for her varsity career. Doing it in a playoff game also, so. Yeah. Doubly momentous for Chanel Taylor. Three-point advantage for the Musketeers. 20 at two, they have not lost since December 27th. Offensive board for Anton, tried to go back up with it. Couldn't hit the shot and eventually it finds its way into the hands of Haynes. Tipped, Anton tracking it down. Anton picked it up and traveled. I think she was expecting to have fouled. And unfortunate for her, I don't think she realized she didn't have the rear view mirror going because behind her was a simple pass to Harris. There's Bonsu. Bonsu low with the shoulder, offensive foul. And that was the important distinction that you mentioned. Lowering the shoulder, that will get you that foul call. Harris tried to catch up with it, lost it. Taylor back to it. Taylor held up a little bit by Baker. Just hesitated too much. Harris. Great, great job by Baker. Harris stepped back on the three, short. And Hinky. Was last to touch. Yeah, she was looking for a foul over the back. Very impressed with Hinky's game thus far. Inside to Harris. Harris got Stonewall, steps it back, tries a three. Struggled from that area at times today. Ahead for Jenkins. Jenkins now to Taylor. Taylor underneath, kisses it off the glass. Five-point advantage and another foul on Nabia Bonsu. Then it's going to be number three on the CI Junior. And she'll come out. Maya Lombert will return. Yeah, Lombert, athletic, a little bit raw. She's kind of in there more for her defensive ability. There's Jada Cooper across the court for Hinky, foot on the line on the three. Harris there to try and get it, but couldn't keep it in her midst. CI's largest lead today is seven at 11 and 11 to four in the first quarter. And now here again at 39-32. That was Lombert with the layup. Nice. Interior look. Well, CI's had leads like this on a couple of occasions. Hills West has been able to come back. Harris, right side for Baker, who will try a three and cans it. Shania Baker hitting a big three. And for the second time in this game, a slow start to a quarter, dogging Hills West. They were able to close out the second in impressive fashion, and they try to do the same here. And massive bucket there. 
And again, it, it kind of starts with the pressure that you see Harris get. Others will find a way then to get open. That was Baker, who her coach Brian Dugan calls a big game player. Third year varsity player and starter. Big basket here with 3.10 left in the third quarter. And whoever moves on in this game, there's going to be such contrast between Comac and whoever this is because both these teams, this is the first time they're ever in a semifinal, yeah. let alone a final. Comac making it there for the third straight year with a win today over Hop Hog, a final score of 54 to 47. They held on late. Yeah, it's a group that really seemingly, uh, Comac, that is, we're talking about, it doesn't get phased. You know, they've, been, they've made this run before. They've been in tight games all year. Taylor flicking it underneath to Jenkins, who's fouled. Sam Hinkie picking up her third. Jenkins up to 15 points, leading CI. Hits the free throw. Lead returns to seven. Harris has been shut out so far in the quarter. Trying to change that here. Tipped up, long rebound, collected by Wilson, but she stepped on the sideline. Yeah, dangerous time now here for Hills West. Short shot, offensive board, CI. Lombard pulls it out, intercepted by Baker. Baker trying to move towards the basket, falls in. I love that last little step by Baker. It's like her, here I go now move. She knew she had two girls right behind her. Trying to shield that and protect that basketball. Taylor harmed and gets the basket. I mean, how many times now are we seeing these and ones back to back for CI? Showing that strength to be able to finish while being fouled. Jada Cooper, the personal, and Taylor. Up to 16. Largest lead today for CI. Back out it comes. That's Cooper for a three, short. Rebounded by Lombert. Picking up some pressure, Taylor able to break it. Taylor's lead pass too strong. Still in, in the first quarter when it was back and forth and back and forth, and what was working well for Hills West was going inside. They've not been able to get that interior presence in the last few moments. Hinky on an offensive board. Back down with it, and a travel or a foul? Well, the official on the far side saying travel, so Hills West will have it. No, you're right, uh, and, and I think when we saw them turn it around a little bit late in that second quarter, it was also getting number two some touches. Tough pass kept alive for a moment. CI smothering defense on Cooper. Cooper trying to get it away. Eventually it's into the hands of Harris. Harris in trouble on the sideline. Eventually Hills West able to get back into their offense. Hinky hesitation. Up with it. Short shot. Jenkins the rebound for CI. Just a complete discombobulated possession for Hills West. Yeah, ball knocking off of legs and nearly thrown out of bounds. Jenkins bricks the shot. Wayne across for Cooper. Cooper in traffic. Cooper getting her own rebound. Back up with it is fouled. Athletic move by Cooper. 
Good second effort by the junior, a three-year player. That tenacity is usually what we see from her on the defensive side of the ball, but you saw that there when she chased down her own rebounds. Jada Cooper averaging just under four points per contest. Scoreless today, and that changes. I mentioned interiorly, part of it is because CI has done a really nice job crashing the glass and making sure the Hills West possessions are one and done. Hinky getting an offensive board right up with it stripped. Taken away by Cooper. Jada Cooper sees an opening, driving to the basket. Count it, and one. What a basket by Cooper. And you saw that slight kind of stutter step. And then the full go towards the basket. And the celebration that followed as well. Shot of Cooper, lighthearted, calm before the game, and some dance steps. Cooper missed on the shot, offensive board for Hills West. That's going to be way short. Hinky trying to keep it alive, unable to do so. And that was a shot off of the miss that certainly Hills West wants back. Hinky intercepted two on one for Hills West. Across back, it comes to Hinky up with it, off the window and in. And another late quarter surge for the Colts. Led by the defense. Jenkins might have got away with a travel, missed the shot. Harris with it. Final seconds. Harris, half court heave, will not go. The CI defense again to start the quarter. Stymies Hills West. The Colts make a run at the end. And it's CI up by three as we head to the fourth. The chance to play in the Suffolk County Finals on the line. Who will rise higher? Dunk harder. And go farther. The playoffs are here. To News 12 Varsity all postseason long. Start of the fourth quarter, three points is all that separates the Musketeers and Colts, and a chance to play in the Suffolk County Championship game. Long jumper is good for Jenkins, who's got 18. It's funny, these, each of these quarters, it seems to follow the same script, where CI starts off strong and Hills West rallies late. Harris short, Hinky the rebound. Hinky trying to back her way in. Hank, Hinky a little strong, a scrum down low. Ball squirts out to the near side. Musketeers have it for a moment and they outlet ahead to Taylor. Taylor sees an opening, Harris on her and Harris fouls her. I don't know if it's a positive or a negative for Hills West, Dylan, but they were able to come back towards the end of that third quarter. Harris was kept scoreless in the third quarter after 17 first-half points. As Taylor will go to the line. In and out of 16 points today. Her and Anaya Jenkins leading the way. Jenkins with 18. And Nabia Bonsu didn't see much time in that third quarter after picking up an early third foul. In and out on both. Harris dribbles into traffic, a blocking foul. And that's that basketball IQ when you're not able to score, you get yourself to the foul line. I mean, what do you think, what were those basketball games like in the backyard or oh the playground goodness. between the four of them? 
All I know is if I'm like another family down the street, I don't want to play those guys. <laughs> I'll pick some other. T I'll pick the Johnsons. Or, down the or you say that's how I'm going to push my kids to get better. Yeah. I have to play those guys every day. <laughs> I pick some other neighbor. Tobias obviously in the NBA. Terry played at Providence, or Tyler played at Providence. Terry playing collegially right now. And Torrey going to head to James, James Madison to play for Kenny Brooks. Robertson commits the foul. And Maya Lombert will go to the free throw line. You know, she's not asked to do a lot offensively, but she's been great here late third quarter and now in the early portion of the fourth quarter. Lombard missing the first free throw. Hills West boys <laughs> letting her hear it. Lombard with the response. Minute gone in the fourth quarter, four point game. Harris. Has Lombard on her. Baker calling out a play. Harris driving on the baseline, gets the friendly roll. I think she's realizing she needs to be a little more aggressive, and that's what she's doing, getting to the hole. 21 points now for Tori Harris. Almost stolen into the hands of Taylor, it comes. Taylor going up on Hinky. tough shot. Battle for it down low. Held ball, and it'll be Hills West possession. Nice defensive presence by Hinky. Yeah, as I said, I, I've been so impressed with her game. She plays a lot bigger and stronger and tougher than maybe her size would indicate. She's long and lanky. Harris holding, her and Hinky Wilson trying to post up. Wilson giving up some size down low. Tough shot, that'll go, and Cooper is fouled. Tied at 48 with the extra point pending. <laughs> and she's been big too, Cooper. What a tough baseline layup. Rattles in. And she commits the foul right after. It's an aggressive foul, too. I think you'll take it. Hills Nabia West. Bonsu going to come back in, playing with the three personals. She gives them an offensive lift, has 10 points today. Hills West, their first lead of the second half. There's Bonsu on the elbow. Won't go. Harris is there to board it. Harris into the painted area. Missed the shot. Goes over the top for a rebound. And it's going to go to CI. Brian Dugan trying to figure out what the call was. And they're going to get Harris... Over the back. Yeah, it was exactly what you said it was. <laughs> she went over the back. But again, it's another aggressive foul. Someone trying to make a play. Bonsu. Up top for Taylor. Back it comes. Bonsu will step into a three. Off the heel. Long rebound. Taylor. Taylor around a defender, kicking it back out. Jenkins, Jenkins will uncork from three and connect. They're actually going to say it's a deep two. Twenty points for Anaya Jenkins, and a one-point advantage for CI. Harris has it knocked away by Taylor.
Foul away from the ball. Harris is down. I didn't see what happened. Harris is down and covering her eyes or her head. Yeah, you, you hate to see this. Looks like she's favoring her left leg, maybe. And she's asking for help up. I completely missed what happened. Well, they're going to get offsetting fouls on Walls and Harris. And Harris is going to have to come off the court with the injury, but she also has four fouls. Yeah. 440 left. Uh, you know, you need to have her obviously in the game, so. But the trainer's taking a look at her now on the Hills West bench. It is the left, either upper calf, knee area that she's getting looked at. And it looks like they're going to wrap up just below her knee. And I wonder if this is a chance maybe for Dugan to call a timeout and get Harris maybe some extra time and get her back in the game. Lots of conversations going on, and CI will inbound. Well, for Hills West now, you look to Hinky, you look to Cooper, you look to Baker to pick up the scoring slack. Bounce pass for Jenkins, who knocks down the J. And a timeout called by CI. 52 to 49. Dylan, so often this gets overlooked. We, we talk about players being new to the circumstances, but we never much mentioned the coaches. They're yeah. also new to this area. Yeah. And how to manage a game at this point, even though you've been through the game itself hundreds of times, I'm sure for both of these coaches, when you get to this point with these stakes, with these uh, mentalities, when you're playing in a different arena, it is different without a doubt. And again, Hills West never getting to this point. And then you look at CI, their last semifinal appearance was 2003. And as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, you've got to go back to 1960 for their last championship. Saturday morning. Not, not feeling Friday night so much. Afternoon now. <laughs> Winner of this game to play on this court Thursday evening, 5.30 p.m. for the Suffolk County Girls AA Finals. That's a more usual start time. Double header in the AA between the girls and the boys that night. Yeah, we know Comac's going to be there. Harris right back in. Good to see. They get it to Harris down low. No good. And you saw she's got to be more conservative. She was not going for that rebound like she had earlier in the game. And Two-free zone for Hills West. Yeah, and if I'm CI, I, ta I attack Harris' side of the, of the court. Bonsu, no good on the three. Long rebound into the hands of Taylor. Taylor driving inside and hits. Six unanswered for CI. Midway through the fourth. Three from Baker short. Harris trying to fight for it. Taylor ahead of the pack. Taylor is fouled by Baker. And even in the act of fouling, I think that she, Baker might have gotten some, some blood in her mouth and she will go to the bench. And Kayla Robertson back in for her. Taylor to the line, 18 points a night. That was her 10th attempted free throw. 
She's five of 10 from the stripe. And right on her season average of 19. Well, right now it's CI who might be closing out a quarter in proper fashion. Hinkie on the right side. Cooper at a Harris. Here's Cooper, no good. Battle for it, down low. Bolt might have gone out of bounds. The official didn't see it that way, but a timeout called by CI. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the rebounds, the CI player who grabbed the rebound, I think she her back was on the baseline, but they were somehow able to get that timeout first. The official who was right on top of the play, he was also, the ball was shielded from him by some of the players. Yeah, okay. So I don't know if he had the best line of it. We were on, we, he's on the opposite side of the court where we were, the one that was right on top of it. A seven point lead for CI. So it's, it's continued in this fashion for most of the game where CI has had a seven, six, eight point lead. Hills West continues to battles ba battle back. CI will extend that lead again. Hills West will battle back. With 3.04 to go, does Hills West have another run in them? Shania Baker holding by both of her ears right now after that contact with Taylor a few moments ago. Nabia Bonsu, right elbow jumper for Jenkins. And the shooting is clutch on all sides for CI. 10-0 run. Harris, tough shot. Long rebound to Wilson. Able to keep it in. Avoid the over and back. Taylor poking it away. Taylor to the basket. CI seniors are coming up big in the late moments. Another turnover, and then a foul on Anaya Jenkins. Yeah, you're so right. Remember, it was 49-48 in favor of Hills West on the N1 attempt, and since that moment, from the five minute mark down, it's been all CI. Baker, Brian Dugan pleading with her on the sidelines to start moving into the offense. And Hills West turns it over. The CI seeming like the team that is more composed at the moment. Yeah. Bonsu throwing it away. A little misconnection between her and Jenkins. Here's Harris will try a three. Kept alive for the moment. Hinky trying to get it to Harris. Ripped away by Walls and a tie up down low. Arrow to CI. Bonsu kicking it out to Taylor. Taylor left wing on the three, no good. Offensive board for Bonsu. How smart was that too, huh? Just backs it back out, using the shot clock, realizing the, the time and score. Bonsu swinging across, Walls is fouled. And then Bonsu with a terrific look. Jane Walls, a sophomore, her and Paul Venturi go way back. She played on the same AU team as Paul Venturi's daughter in sixth grade, so he's known her for a few years.
Again, you've got to go back to five minutes and 52 seconds for the last Hills West basket. And when they look back at this game, if they're not able to come back, they're going to look at these long stretches oh, where yeah. they just couldn't get anything done. Underneath, ball knocked out of bounds. CI will have it again. Jolie Wilson showing frustration. Hills West trying to pressure the ball. Taylor lobbed it ahead, able to find Bonsu. Bonsu underneath to Jenkins. Jenkins back out. So and smart. CI again. Slowing it down, and Hinky is forced to foul. For a team that's never been to this point with this group of players, they are playing like they've been here before. Yeah. <laughs> Chanel Taylor, 22 points today. She's had quite a few trips to the line. And it's been a memorable playoffs for her so far. She had 13 in the 43-37 win over Longwood, including eclipsing the 1,000 career point mark. 12-point lead with under a minute to play. Baker flicks up a tough shot. Harris there. Count the basket. And Harris will go to the free throw line as well. Well, that ends the drought for Hills West, but they've limited Harris to six points in the second half after a 17-point first half performance. Well, that'll certainly be part of the post-game conversation. What did you guys do defensively? First, the free throw rims out. Three-pointer in and out. CI having some trouble. Harris fouled by Walls inadvertently. So it'll be CI and Comac in the Suffolk County Championship. Two teams that'll have won their 21st game of the season today with two identical records at 21 and 2. Diamond Edwards coming in. And Shane Walls will go out. And Tori Harris will have a pair. So her high school career will come to a close today. And that's probably why this is such a, a tough pill to swallow for Hills West and Brian Dugan as we have a timeout. Is you have this, this core group, which largely are not graduating. Samantha Hinkey, Caleb Robertson, Giada Cooper. But you lose such a phenomenal player mm. in Tori Harris and Jolie Wilson as well. So what is the future for this team after getting to what would be the high watermark of this program? Yeah, that's the ultimate question that will be attacked probably maybe tomorrow at noon <laughs> when, uh, when they regroup and, and start looking ahead. But you don't certainly replace a program-changing type player like Harris. And... The Comac girls now have seen enough. They will make their way out of here and return. I don't know, about 4.30 or so, 4 o'clock on Thursday to prepare for their game against Central Islip. Comac going for their third consecutive Suffolk County Championship. They're also back-to-back -back Long Island champions. And Comac, uh, excuse me, CI, as we alluded to earlier, 
All you got to do is see the banner in the gym to know <laughs> it's 1960, the last time they won their last county title. And we are talking about early on, so that would be during the tail end of the Eisenhower administration. <laughs> Usually we like to play that game of uh, that player wasn't born yet, or that player was four. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone associated. The AD probably wasn't even born yet. <laughs> well, it wasn't that long ago. Comac had never won one. Yeah. So a recent stalwart and a new face. See Jade Walls digging it on the sideline. Yeah, big Fresh Prince fan apparently. So Suffolk County Championship game. Here come the Musketeers. It will be interesting to see how Comac response the defensive pressures created by CI. Yeah, the athleticism. Baker short on the three. And Taylor will have it. And Hills West will call off the dogs with five seconds to go. CI is on to the Suffolk County Finals. And they're dancing at CI for good reason. What a big performance, especially in that fourth quarter. Crunch time, the Musketeers played their best basketball and they are in the county chip. 13-0 run in the middle of that fourth. Led by their seniors, Anaya Jenkins and Chanel Taylor, each over the 20-point mark. And CI will take on Comac in the Suffolk County Championship. On March 12th, starting at 11 a.m., watch the best of Long Island High School basketball battle for the right to be called champions. Live on Channel 14. This doubleheader begins at 11 a.m. with the Class A Finals. Followed by the Class AA Finals at 1.30 p.m. Watch the best of Long Island High School basketball live on the big screen on Optimum Channel, Channel 14. Chanel Taylor, 23 points in the winning effort as CI advances to the Suffolk County AA Finals. Uh, Chanel, senior-wise, your group seemed to close the door on Hills West. What was it about that, that senior group that, um, I guess, mentality kind of pulled things together at the end for you guys? Well, I just like to remind my team to like stay with themselves and just keep staying focused and don't let the crowd get to them and stuff. We just like to stay focused and keep playing hard. Uh, you guys really uh, locked down Harris, I felt, in the second half. After she had 17, I think she finished with 24 or something like that. Was there a change defensively? What did you do differently in the second half? Um, I think we just, we tried, we helped a lot more. And we didn't let her drive as much. And for you, as you were, they seemed to go on runs towards the end of the quarters, but it was the fourth quarter, you ended up being able to have that big run. What was the key during that stretch? I think it was 11-0. Uh, I think I just tried to keep playing hard, and I looked for my opportunities, and I took them. And for Comac, what do you guys expect on Thursday? Uh, we expect them to play hard. We're probably going to have to worry about rebounding and probably shooting, too. All right, thanks a lot. Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck. Chanel Taylor finishes with 23 points and the winning effort. CI on to their first county championship game in quite a while as they look for their first county title since 1960. Today was a score of 63 to 53 over Hills West. For our entire News 12 varsity crew, for Dylan Butler and our producer Tom Snars, I'm Matt Shorter saying so long, and we'll catch you next time on News 12 varsity.